Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. And today, as a special guest, I have Scott Rector to tell his story of a experience he had in Afghanistan. I can't even say it. I want to say thank you for your service, sir, too. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, so growing up, it, it was interesting. I, as a teenager, I was always interested in, in like, ghost adventures and you know shows like that and I but I was raised in a really evangelical household and so ghosts and spirits and stuff weren't really a thing in in my family they were you know angels and demons because human spirits when they die they don't stay on earth they either, they either go to heaven or to hell you know and and I and so I never had any paranormal experiences myself growing up anything like that that I can remember but then I joined the military and uh about, I don't know, six months after I finished basic training, I deployed to Afghanistan. And um, I was there and it was probably three or four months into the deployment. We we were on this little, it's called a COP, which stands for Cow Combat Outpost. Um, and it was in the middle of this town called De Maywand in uh, Afghanistan. <clears throat> and um, it was in the Kandahar province of Afghanistan, right on the border of, um, oh shoot, I can't remember the name of that other province. But um, yeah, so uh, it, it was a pretty hot spot, a lot of combat, um, but we pulled night guard on our cop. Uh, you know, somebody would have to sit in the towers and we had a blimp that was above the cop that had a camera on it that gave us a 360 degree view of the surrounding area so that we could you know keep an eye on what was going on around the base and um so i was on it was probably about two three four in the morning somewhere around there and i was on guard and i was operating the camera and there's this cemetery and the cemeteries in afghanistan are pretty cool they're very different uh, lots of ribbons and stuff uh, on sticks that are flowing ar around all the time, and and they don't have gravestones like we do. You know, they stack they stack stones like flat stones up, and th those are the grave markers. Oh. So, um, I and I was using the camera, and it was in night vision uh, because it was night, and I saw a heat signature in in this graveyard walking around, and um, there's a there was a military curfew in place so nobody was supposed to be out at this time um and so i called it up and they sent the i think you went out were, for a second there i'm sorry oh that's okay um so the quick reaction force went out to the cemetery to check it out and the guy was still there on the camera and it was clearly a person and i had multiple people around me watching it as well because our guys were out there and they wanted to keep an eye on our guys, and and they called a, called it back up and said there was nothing there. There was no people out there at all. They checked out the entire graveyard, and we watched them walk right past this this person that was on the camera. And they're saying there's nothing there, but there there was clearly a person, a heat signature of a person walking around in the graveyard. And that was the very first paranormal experience that I ever had. And it got me, you know, obviously it got me very interested in the paranormal. And I've been on, you know, a few investigations, um, you know, with nothing like Ghost Adventures or Ghost Nation or whatever you'd see on TV. It's just me and a couple guys just going out to do our own thing. And, and uh, I've had a few minor experiences, but... Um, nothing major since that time in Afghanistan until just recently, actually, after the first seance that we did with Patty Negri. Um, and I that, that one too. <laughs> okay, well, so that, that was the very first event that was held by the Haunted Diary School. Um, and that was actually back before it was called the Higher Haunted Diary Paranormal School. It was just called the Haunted Diary. And we we did that, and I don't know. I, I kind of had a spiritual awakening after that, I guess. And and um, I started practicing witchcraft, and um, and since all since all of that, and since I've started using divination tools to to communicate and stuff like that, instead of you know a, 
an EMF detector and a voice recorder, you know, and using those in conjunction with each other, you know, I, I've had a lot more experiences. Uh, the, after that first seance, uh, we had a poltergeist, we had poltergeist activity in our house where a statue was flipped upside down on our altar. Can and you then, talk about that? Because I saw that on the page, but I didn't read into it more. I'm like, no, I'll wait for when we interview. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that was the first poltergeist um, that activity that we had. Um, and it was a little statue that, um, it, it's, it's a very flat statue. Um, and it has, it, there's a picture of it on the Facebook page, like way back uh, several months ago. I'll um, try to find it and post it for the people watching. Yeah, I can, I, and I can grab it if if you okay. need me to. Um, okay, so this is the the statue, oh. and it it doesn't really mean anything. It was just a gift that was from one of my wife's friends. Um, but as you can see, it's flat, so it's not. You can't just like tip it over yeah. or whatever. Well, so it was it was laying flat in where we kept our altar and like and we and after the seance and everything, we went back to the altar to put our candles back and our incense back and everything. And it was laying upside down like this. <laughs> and there's no one else here except for me and my wife, so you know, we we were all we were both kind of flabbergasted about that. Well, um so that was the the second major paranormal activity that I've experienced um, so since that time in Afghanistan. We had another one where a, a one of our lights. Um, well, we have these votive candle holders right inside of our front door on, that are attached to the wall, and one of them was literally ripped off of the wall and gently placed on the floor without breaking. And they're made of glass. So if they would have fallen off the wall, I imagine it probably would have broken. Break. Yeah. And it also would have made a loud sound. We were both home when it happened. <laughs> and we walked in and saw it. So, and then, so we had that happen. And then we did the second seance um, with Richard, Lale, and Patty. And, um, after that, we started hearing some voices in the house and some walking around in the attic. It was clear as day footsteps. Um, and we've communicate. We've tried to communicate with the things that are here. Uh, we got one um, name uh, jo of George. I'm not sure who he is, but we're working on trying to figure out who he was. Um, and then after the third seance, um, and we posted a picture about this in, in Facebook as well, um, I, we have those little children statues that represent the three, the three children that we have between the two of us. Um, and they were all laying face down. Normally they're standing up and in a circle, and they were all laying face down um, facing the exact cardinal directions of north, east, and south. I even took my compass out to check it, and they were facing the exact cardinal directions. And um, when, I do, when I do work, my, my spell work, um, I have a circle that's painted on the floor that's a compass, and it's, it's got the cardinal directions mapped out, and I use the elements of the direction in the directions and stuff. So I thought that was very interesting. Well, so after that, the activity just kind of died off and nothing happened for a while. But then two nights ago or three nights ago, my wife and I were in the kitchen together. We were cooking dinner and we heard there was a loud knock on our back door three times. And somebody said, hey, hello. <laughs> and it, it sounded like an old woman's voice. So, so, and, and our dogs reacted to it. They started barking and going crazy. And um, so I walked to check the back door in the backyard, which we have a, a fence with a locked gate. So nobody should be in the backyard and um, nobody's there. So, um, you know, we, and 
So I go back to the kitchen and it knocked on another door in the back and said, hello. And it was that same old, old woman's voice. And so, you know, my wife and I, it, it, we're very careful about what we allow in. And so, you know, we just told it, we don't know you, you're not invited in, go away. That's awesome. Um, That's the and then we put protection do. charms around all the windows and doors and we, we put salt in front of all the doors. Um, my wife is a, is a bruja. So a, a lot of her practice is from the Hispanic and Mexican traditions. And so that's what we, yeah. So that's what we were doing. Um, cause, cause she's, she's Hispanic, um, ethnically. Um, so, um, which that in itself has been really cool because, it's allowed me to learn a whole nother culture of witchcraft, you know? Um, to me, I don't, that's why I get I, people are like, well, you're a witch, but I, I'm used to it. So that's like a yeah. upbringing. I'm right. a Christian, but with an open mind. Okay. <laughs> that's why I say everybody. Yeah, <laughs> that's well, the best way I can explain my, it. My, my wife, um, she's a fourth generation Bruja. Her, her um, grandmother, her mother, grandmother, and great grandmother and great great grandmother were all brujas. Well, so so bottom line, what I'm getting at is is um, you know that from that first experience I had in Afghanistan and the recent experiences that I've had, it, it's it, it's kind of awakened a new passion in me to do investigations and also work on my personal practice. Um, you know, because for for a long time I. I want. I, I wandered around spiritually. I didn't really know what to believe in or anything like that. And uh, you know, like I said, my, my dad was a pastor. I was raised in the evangelical Christian home. It just, you know, it, I never felt connected to God. I never felt connected to, to Christianity, even as a kid. Um, and it, you know, finding this group and and getting into paranormal investigations and witchcraft, that's kind of given me a new purpose spiritually. And, it, and it's been a really good thing for me. That's beautiful. But yeah, so, so um, I mean, I, I don't know what else I can say about my experiences and my journey to this point. Well, you answered all the questions I was going to ask. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm not even going to... Um, I like that you say that. I, I only say Christian because the the only thing that's keeping me connected is Archangel Michael because I had mm. a really strong experience with him and I have not said it on my channel or nor you guys yet. Maybe the um, Bishop James knows it now because I told him. Okay. But that's it. And maybe when I feel comfortable, I'll say it, but it was a very strong <laughs> encounter. Yeah. So that, but I don't agree with most. I like the way James, um, Bishop James says it's like, there's a lot of it's lost in translation. Yeah. And, and I'll say this about Bishop Long. He is an incredible testament to how Christians should act yeah. from what I've seen. You know, him and my father are, are the two people that the only two people I've ever seen that actually have that space. Um, embody Christian values and you know the idea of love and mercy you know because because um like I said I was raised in the church I've I, I went to church every Sunday of my life uh, from childhood all the way up to the day I turned 18 um, because my parents made me <laughs> um so you know I, I I've been involved in the church for a long time um, I'm very knowledgeable of the Bible because I was a pastor's son and I, you know, I went to Bible studies and Sunday schools and, and, um, you know, the, the evangelical, traditional evangelical tr translation of the Bible, even with all the different denominations and the different, you know, offshoots of the beliefs of what the Bible means, it, it it's all, you know, I, I've never seen anybody truly live it the way that my father and Bishop Long do. Yeah. Those are the two that I've seen that really do. My dad, my dad, grand, my grandpa's, or was, he was a pastor. But my grandma, she did her own thing. I think, I'm not sure, I have to look into it, was um, Santeria. Okay. She, my dad would tell me, the funny story of when he, my grandpa would go off to do study work, like for the church and stuff. 
she would lit up a big cigar and start doing some funny things. <laughs> <laughs> and I would be cracking up like, what, that? And he's like, yeah, yeah. He used, she used to talk to spirit and stuff. And then she'd be in the corner with her little cigar. I'm like, well, that sounds familiar. <laughs> that sounds like what I think it is. Yeah. I'm still learning. Um, yeah, I, I don't know a lot about uh, Santa Maria myself. Um, my, my wife has several books on it that I plan on reading cause I want to learn. Um, you know, and, and my wife is, my wife is very connected to her Hispanic culture. She took me to this, or she showed me this parade that they do every year. I can't remember what it's called. My Spanish is terrible. No, you're fine. Um, but it's for, um, the Virgin Guadalupe and, and they dress up in their costumes and they have the devil there and they dancing and stuff. And, and it, it goes back, I guess, to um, like my, Mayan traditions. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that was incredible. I, I enjoyed that very much. It's a, um, it's part of their culture. It's part of, it's, um, there's a back culture in Puerto Rico too. And in Haiti like it's a caribbean thing and i don't know how i got to mexico but it's like a native american kind of like I'm yeah turning to <laughs> yeah it's, it's yeah that that was that was absolutely fascinating to me i, I loved that mm -hmm. i'm not um i used to be scared of it and then as i grew up and i read about it i'm like this isn't evil or bad it's just the way they because they ended up mixing santeria with catholic yeah yeah they yeah, so and and my wife, you know, does that. She she uses the saints in her work yeah. and stuff, and and um, uh, you know, there's a very I I have a de a degree in history, and so I I love history. Um, <laughs> I love learning about history, especially history of other cultures, yeah. and um, you know that there's a long history of um south america and mexico you know once uh once catholicism came over there you know from spain and and stuff like that um they you know they were mystics mm -hmm. um but they you know they were forced to start practicing catholicism but they didn't want to lose their mysticism so they ingrained the two and and i think that's incredible um and i think that's a awesome example of why witchcraft and christianity and islam and buddhism and uh, all that can you know paganism whatever that can all mesh together and mm -hmm. and that can all be they can be allies <laughs> you know they don't have to hate each other no. you know and and i wait you know and i wish that more people would realize that and i think the same way my husband too <laughs> we <laughs> We used to get into conversations with his family. They love deep thought conversations and my dad too. So this is like, this is my love. I love doing this, but we would say, well, his uncle, he's a very smart man, very wise, would say if, if you would take the Bible and just shorten it up to just follow love, was it that way? What did he say? Oh, the Ten Commandments. If mm -hmm. you just shorten it up and just follow what love is, you would always do what the Ten Commandments would say. That's the, yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, and I like that. I like the, I like taking stuff apart and thinking about it in a different way. I and I'm I'm the same way. I'm I'm very logical. It, that's that's why I I'm a good detective, um, <laughs> because I'm very logical. I'm very I, I like I like to put things together. I like to put fit the pieces together and things and. And that's why I like history and stuff like that, because I like to take lessons from history and apply them and, and use them today. And, and I wish more people would do that. <laughs> you know, I, I and, uh, you know, I, I have a problem even talking to my own family sometimes because uh, they're all, my entire family are evangelical Christians they don't agree with my practice. They don't agree with me not being a Christian, you know, and my dad is really good about respecting my decisions and, and realizing that 
I'm a 33 year old man. I'm not a child. You know, I'm, I, I have the right to my own path and my own decisions. Um, my sister is kind of on the same boat with me. She's, um, uh, she's not so much a Christian anymore. She's, she's been moving away from that. Um, but she's she's kind of in that I'm not sure what to believe stage uh, where I was, you know, and, and she's my younger sister. So uh, I'm the oldest. So, you know, I'm she asks me a lot of questions and I try to try to help her and stuff. And um, but my brother, he's a he's a pastor and my dad was a pastor. My mom was in ministry. Um, my brother and my mom are the they're the type that like all they want to do is fight with you about it <laughs> you know my mom used to she used to fight with me about it years ago and then the other day something happened i don't know she just she's been supporting me in this which i thought she would be like a little bit more like be careful don't do that though that like she's open about it and she is in church she's um, the helico they have a name for that she's in the chair She's the one that helps the okay. pastors and stuff, and she'll go to yeah. places to pray. And my dad's been through that, so he's not as strict as she is. Yeah. So he's like, as long as you're fine and happy, you do you. Well, so my my wife and I, we, you know, I, I identify as an agnostic. Um, you know, I, I believe in deities, in mul multiple deities i don't believe in just one deity um you know my, my wife is more uh, well that it started cutting out You're yeah i saw that <laughs> yeah with strong energy dude <laughs> yeah no i i've um I've been finding that in in my lot in my practice, um, you know, I'm brand new to this. I only started practicing myself. It really when the group started up. So how long has the group been up? Three months, four months, something like that. So so I I'm brand new to to witchcraft and practicing. Like I, I read about it a little bit and stuff before, um, but it was for educational purposes. It wasn't for practice purposes, and and so. Um, I'm finding that my, my energy is a lot stronger than I realized. Um, <laughs> you know, I just, um, last night or two nights ago, um, it, I, I don't, I don't know if you were in the class with Kaya when we uh, did this spell oh. to summon the agrigores mm -mm. or the egregores. Mm -hmm. Um, I think this okay. Friday I'll be joining for another one with her oh. finally. Yeah, yeah, that the that class series on the hexes should be really good, really good. Um, Kai is such a good teacher. Yeah, uh, but she, was, we did a spell in in her class to summon an egregore, and um, that was really kind of one of the first spells that I did because before you know I I, I participated in the ones and classes and stuff, but. I wasn't confident in my abilities and, and I was still learning and I'm, I'm still learning, but I was still learning to get to the point of practicing spell work. And, um, you know, I, I put everything I had into that spell and, and because I wanted it to work because I wanted an egregore. That just sounds like a cool thing to have, like your own demon that, that will serve and protect you. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> And so I put everything I had into it and, you know, I, I did the, the, the offering of the egg and everything. And I did the candle and did the chant. And I, I honestly, you know, a few weeks later, I, I forgot about every, all of that. And, and um, well, we, we ordered some dowsing rods and they came in two days ago and we were using the dowsing rods for the first time. And um, my wife was holding them and she was asking some questions and, and uh, we figured out that cross means yes, open means no and, and all that. And, um, and then she's just like, I think you need to ask a question. I'm feeling like you need to ask the question. And, and I felt like I needed to ask 
because we were con con connected with something, I feel like I need to ask if they were, if the, this entity was attached to something in the house. And it said, yes. And then I felt I need to ask, is it attached to me? And so I asked and it said, yes. And I was just like, okay, so is this my egregore? Is this Balthazar? And it said, yes. And oh, so I was just okay. like, okay, very cool. <laughs> like, you know, I asked it a few more questions and, and it, and it just confirmed that it was my aggregore. And, and uh, so I gave it an offering of an egg. I lit a, lit a colored candle for its color and said, thank you for talking to me. And, and that really was the first time that I've seen results of any of my spell work. And it really boosted my confidence. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to say the way I practice isn't too much spell work. I don't, I rarely do a lot of spell work. I do, I'll put a candle on because my mother in law and Catholic, I don't know if it's just a Hispanic thing or a Catholic thing because I'm still learning. Don't ever have the house without light. So I, I always try to leave always a candle lit, one candle. But my altar, or however you want to say it, is angel based. It has a little lot of little angel statues and stuff. Yeah, and we we have a lot of those um, those candles that have the saints on them. That's what um, I because, mean. like I said, my wife still uses this. She uses the saints in her work. Yeah, that's that's how I got used to it. My I, my dad would put that in his house. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, well, this is to help. And this is for my brother. Cause he has a brother had that was um, military. So we would always okay. lit a candle for him. And um, I was so connected to him, or am, because he loved the same thing I loved. I grew up talking mm -hmm. about this stuff, like UFOs and all the ghosts and stuff and he would always look put this on coast to coast you'll see i'll hear all the stories and stuff and he would bring me videotapes the last thing he did before he he died he brought me a, a vhs <laughs> oh, okay. recording of uh, it should be around youtube of the twin towers and there's this ufo like swirling and the, the person like records it oh i haven't seen that I'll try to look for it and see if I can fit it. I can't get copyrighted anyway because I'm not. <laughs> I don't care. I'll put it in later. But that's the last thing he brought me, and I was like, "That's so cool." He would always bring me like, or tell me weird stories and stuff like that. That's very cool. That's very cool. Yeah, my, I, I, I'm also very interested in in um, space and astronomy and. And aliens and stuff like that my my wife especially my wife's a huge sci-fi fan and i am too but not to the level that she is uh like i and, and she's a huge star trek fan i'm a huge star wars nerd so like it, it's trek. a little rivalry that we have no it's trek. what the um yeah star trek <laughs> the one that the yep <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Spock and live long and prosper. Yeah. yeah, but she got she got me to watch all the Star Treks, and and I really love. I actually really like Star Trek a lot. I just like Star Wars more. But um, yeah, but we you know, we've never had any experiences with with aliens or UFOs, really. I have. Um, <laughs> have you? That's cool. That's cool. Where where was that at? The one I told with Richard Leo was like the first experience that I, I thought it was a dream <laughs> okay that I, they came the weird thing is is making me not think it's just a dream is that they show me a piece of the future and it's so creepy okay because <laughs> the dream starts off that I'm a woman already and I'm dressed in a green dress right and I look throughout a balcony years years later pass and i work i go to work to like a embassy hotel thing and they had this gallery like for all the employees and i'm dressed just like her in the dream hmm. <laughs> and i i just remember the dress especially when my and my friend gave it to me it's not like i went i brought it they brought me the dress like here you can just tailor it and then fix it to you and I'm looking at the dress, I'm like, it has the same slit. It has the same. 
Wow. Is the color because it's so the olive green color and everything. That's incredible. So that's so great. And I have it written down. It's not like I remembered it. it. I write all my dreams down. So I had that dream written down before it happened. Mm, that's really cool. That's really <laughs> it's cool. really creepy. And then my dad's the one and my mom. They've had more like, no, the second time was in Wisconsin. Wisconsin has a lot of activity, I guess. Okay. Like UFOs. And in broad daylight, we're walking from school. Me and my brother, my dad, and her. As we come back home, I see what I think it's a balloon, but it looks like a UFO. My dad sees something up in the sky. He's like, it looks like a UFO, but then it looks like a balloon. My mom's like, no, 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 it's changing. It's changing. It looks like a cigar with windows in it. Mm -hmm. And my brother, too. <laughs> so we both are watching something change between our eyes. And it's four of us. So that, that creeped me out. <laughs> it was the second thing. The, then my dad, um, not too long ago, three years ago, before I moved from Puerto Rico, we were living on a farm. And he would walk the dogs early in the morning because he's an early morning person. And it's like still dark. And the farm had a lot of grass, like those tall corn things that they were growing. And he's walking the dog. He's coming back inside the, the farm. And it's just like that movie with the alien that the, you can see the leaves moving. Uh, I, yeah. yeah. He says it's like that. It's, so I see something moving. A dog's barking at whatever it is. Huh. And we had a Rottweiler. And he's like, hold, hold. And, and whatever's like stops. And all of a sudden, he, it just stopped moving. And then he keeps walking back to the house. And he sees, I can't believe I'm going to say that. <laughs> he sees a ship so close to the farm that he could literally see the window and the people inside wow and he's like in shock and he comes running to the house and he wanted to wake me up but i woke up anyway it was like really early like i wanted to, to wake you up but i was like in shock looking at this thing <laughs> moving and it just went and disappeared yeah. we have the weirdest like ufo stories that's a that's an incredible story. I, I I definitely believe in UFO or in aliens, and I, I definitely believe you know I, I think it's a statistical impossibility for there not to be aliens. Honestly, yeah. uh, I mean it, there's a countless number of stars, and every one of those stars has their own solar system. You know, like in planets, and it, it's like I said, it, it's statistically impossible for there not to be another Earth-like planet that has life exactly I, I i that's just my i mean that's my opinion um but i think that science and math back it back it up <laughs> yeah. you know there's no way that there's no one else out there <laughs> oh, yeah. with everything yeah. with all that space out there no yeah and 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 you know i i'm not sure what i think about i like i don't know if you watch ancient aliens or anything like that but you know <laughs> I, i'm not sure what i think about you know a race of aliens being the you know building the pyramids or you know setting up society as we know it and or, yeah. you know i'm not sure what i think about that um I, I i think there's some compelling evidence that says that that that's a possibility but it seems a little far-fetched to me personally but I do believe that aliens are out there. Um, you know, I, I just don't believe, I, I believe that none of us, the aliens or us, have the capability to contact each other, or visit each other yet. I, I, I'm, I'm sure one day we will have that technology with the way things are going, um, yeah. but we're just not there yet. That's why I was so sad. I made a video about that when the, yeah. the scope it just died like the one in Puerto Rico, the one of the biggest satellite dishes that we had. Mm. Just went they let it they get destroyed and it didn't do anything. I know there's no money for it because of everything going on, but that that was sad. Because <laughs> they were getting yeah. a lot of information from that. 
Well, and I don't know if you've seen the stories lately, um, like in popular science and stuff, but um, they've been detecting some, Signals. some radio waves that mm -hmm. are are not natural. They 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 have to be made by something.